Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on tips to avoid non-compliance, how to speed up AD and SB monitoring with Varion Publications. I have the pleasure of introducing our host today, Varion's VP of Business Development, John Talmadge, and our Director of Channel Sales, Joe Moralia, who have a combined 50 years experience in the industry and are our subject matter experts for many things, including technical publications and compliance. Our agenda, we'll spend a brief moment talking about our Varion Solutions portfolio before we dive into industry trends and insights, take a look inside Varion Publications, and then again, our Q&A at the end. John, please take it away and share a little bit more about Varion. Sure, thanks, Danny. Uh, just in looking at the registrations, it seems like we have some folks that this will be the first uh, exposure they have to Varion, or many of you know us as different names. So ATP, uh, Flight Docs, Case Bank, Rusada are all under the Varion brand now. So as you see, we're going to be talking about something very specific today in profiling compliance, but our experience uh, spans the, the entirety of the aviation industry all the way from uh, business and general aviation through the commercial side of the house. And you can see here some of the... Uh, some of the products that we have and where they're targeted. So with publications, obviously, um, we have both sides of the equation there. So our users, but also our partnering with the OEMs to provide those in an, in an integrated fashion for those of you who are also very on tracking customers. And then uh, we have Tracking Plus, which is our formerly known as Rusada. So those of you who are joining us from overseas or maybe some of the uh, military components. Those um, are the people that you're most familiar with and dealing with, and we're happy to have them aboard. And then Varion Diagnostics, which is uh, our group that we we handle the air carriers with mostly. So uh, some of the bigger names that you fly on day to day, I'll use our guided troubleshooting and recurring defect, defect analysis um, programs to help uh, up their game and make sure that they minimize any kind of delays associated with maintenance events. So welcome aboard. Uh, that is who we are at Varian. I mentioned before we have uh, publications. We're one of the only companies that will republish um, OEM technical publications, maintenance manuals, diagrams, IPCs, things of that nature. And we have over 100 OEMs that are on board with us too. So everything from uh, from Pratt & Whitney and Textron to DAR, MD Helicopter, Honeywell, uh, just brands that you're very familiar with. And we have over 1,700 libraries and 160,000 different documents on our platform. Awesome. Thanks, John, for that overview of Varion. Before we get into the industry trends and insights section, I'd love to hear from our audience how often do you encounter difficulties in accessing up-to-date technical publication and regulatory documents? We'll pause here just for a couple moments and let people get their responses in. Great. And on a different but related topic, has your flight department experienced any compliance related challenges? Fantastic, seeing those votes come in, thank you so much. Based on the responses that we've seen so far, I'm really excited to hear what you, John, and Joe have to share. John, can you share what industry trends and insights we have on these topics specifically? Sure. Thank you, Danny. So I just want to talk real quickly about where we are as a global aviation industry and um, the emphasis that's being placed on compliance um, and, and how that's being pushed down to the operators and the MROs. So, um, both EASA, ANAC, and the FAA, you know, all the different compliance organizations, um, regulatory organizations are putting an emphasis on um, quality management systems in the FAA. We know this is uh, as part 145, 209, and, and 211. Uh, um, similar operations in other regulatory agencies, if you are one of our, our overseas partners. But in the FAA particular, 
Um, there was a notice of proposed rulemaking last year to try to push the safety management systems down from uh, part 121 or our scheduled carrier and flag operators uh, down to part 135 and even part 91 uh, tour operators. So uh, from the maintenance organization side, this is something that we're really familiar with. From an operator side, that can be uh, an increasing burden on the, the maintenance operation within the, uh, the 135 or part 91 group. So one of the best things that we can do for that is to make sure that we are not uh, inviting um, additional scrutiny and we are keeping all of our all of our uh, ADs and SBs complied with. So the FAA has placed such an emphasis on it that they redid their AD database search function through their dynamic regulatory system. So if you uh, have used this lately, you know that whether or not that was an improvement is uh, to the usability from the user side is up for debate. It's certainly more comprehensive, but um, what we're doing now is to try to uh, provide you an option to more easily find your 80s and SBs that are associated with the aircraft that you're operating or working on. Um, one of the things that's ex exacerbating the issue is the shortage of qualified AMTs, in, uh, especially in part 145. So. Hangers are full, but there are fewer and fewer techs or engineers, if you will, on the floor. And uh, as you can see on the chart on the right-hand side, according to Wyman, um, we're sort of at an inflection point in the industry where the number of AMTs required is greater than the number that are available. And where that really bears out are things like troubleshooting, where it takes a lot of uh, experience and just hands-on time to be able to instinctively follow and know where uh, where problems are occurring. Also in the AD and SB research, uh, th that is a, a large time consuming function that is critical to, uh, to maintaining compliance and then uh, having an up-to-date source for inspection tasks. So as we see, especially uh, among mixed fleet um, operators, sometimes it's difficult to have all of your uh, inspection information in one source or easily findable. So how big a deal is this? In 2023, um, the fines ranged from 6,000 to 150,000 for maintenance related tasks. Uh, before that, it was almost a half a million dollars to a single MRO. And obviously if you watch the news globally, there is an intense scrutiny on uh, everything that has to do with maintenance and uh, upkeep of of aircraft in the commercial space. It's clear that compliance is getting more complex, right? And with fewer mechanics, flight teams are looking at ways to become more efficient. For those in the audience, can you please share, on average, how long do you or your maintainers spend searching for ADs and SBs per aircraft? And I know it can range based on the type of aircraft you service, but just a general understanding of how long this typically takes for you and your teams. Awesome. Well, Joe, can you please share how we can streamline this process? Sure. Thanks, Danny. And thanks, John, for your insight. Um, let me just share my screen right here. And I'll show you um, what uh, what we've been talking about or the, the Varian platform, um, our Tech Pub solution, our platform, what it, what it allows you to do. Um, so just to put this all into context, if you're not currently using the Varian technical uh, publications platform, you're probably doing um, um, a variation of this or exactly this when it comes to looking for ADs and service bulletins. So we're, we're going to use, um, in this case, we're going to use uh, um, a King Air 350. Um, first, you'd have to go to the Textron website, go through their, uh, th through their portal, um, sign in, go through their portal, and then uh, find the information that you're looking for. Uh, you then have to go to the Pratt Whitney uh, website and do the exact same thing and try to find the information that you're looking for. Um, and then you repeat that process again uh, with the prop information that you need from Hartzell. And then, as John pointed out, um, the FAA website, you have to repeat that process 
again, for all three components. Um, and if you're looking at engines, um, you know, it could take you a little bit longer because it only goes to the, um, it only will search to the series as opposed to the, uh, to the model. So um, what the Varian platform allows you to do is to combine all those steps in a one-time um, creation of a profile specific to your aircraft and, um, and then have that profile um, available to you for any type of um, updates for SBs and for ADs. So to create one, and I already have one created, but I'm going to show you very quickly how to create one, uh, create a profile. You simply go to uh, the, um, the um, airframe type or airframe, then you go to the manufacturer. In this case, it's a Textron. Uh, this, uh, you click this, uh, then you pull the model down um, and then so on and so forth. And you continue to do that uh, for the sake of time. I'm not going to go uh, dive deep into that, but Basically, what you come up with is this profile that you've created for the airframe engine and propeller. Now, you can also add accessories and, you know, be more specific on what 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 is on your aircraft. So if anything is, um, you know, STC or anything like that, you'll be able to pull the information because with Varian, we include all the ADs, um, TCs and STCs in our in our publications. Um, I've saved this profile. And um, haven't updated it yet, but based on th these three components, um, you have 417 ADs and SBs associated with these three components. So for the last sake of time here, um, uh, just this is the same profile. I've updated it. And now um, it has, in this case, all the ADs, or if I wanted to check all the, all the service bulletins, you just pull the, um, uh, the information there. Uh, as you can see, there's 359 service bulletins and 32 ADs. Um, you can go into each um, AD um, and comply with, um, uh, you know, either put it in progress, comply, not comply, not, a, not applicable. Let's just say in this case, we complied. We wanna add that to our um, compliance report. Um, all the information's here, the method of compliance notes, it allows you to do that, you hit save. Now that information is saved um, to this profile. Um, if you want to print a report, go here, hit inspection, your inspection report that you're going to present to the FAA. Now you have all that information here uh, in, a, in a PDF ready for you to sign off and present to the FAA. Um, that's that's as simple as it gets. I mean, you've eliminated the multi-step process of going through each individual OEM, pulling that information, and then, then having to do an AD search through the FAA website. With As I mentioned, with the one-time setup of the profile, it's as simple as one click to get all the updated uh, SBs and ADs. Uh, the other uh, item that I'll show you real quick, and this is a service that is included in your subscriptions, and it's basically... Um, an AD alert. Um, so you can go into the user settings, uh, go into system settings, um, click the uh, click the individual that you want to receive the um, the uh, the AD alerts. Um, hit edit, go down, click this, the receive all AD alerts. Uh, scroll down, hit save. Now you're going to be notified of any ADs that come specific to your profile. Uh, very simple to use, very easy to set up. Um, Hope you guys have uh, any questions on that. Please put them in the chat. Danny. Yeah, thank you, Joe, for that demo. You know, it really has a sneak peek of many ways that we can help flight departments streamline how they get documentation, how they can receive those AD and SB alerts. And as I grab this screen share back from you, I was wondering if you could go over Again, just some of those best practices for navigating those compliance challenges. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as we covered, um, having everything on one platform is, is, is um, you know, is a plus, right? You have um, all three components in this case and or accessories if you needed to add to there, uh, add to it um, on, on one platform, uh, as mentioned. Um, you get access to all the ADs and service bulletins if you're picking up the, um, if you're going direct with Varian for your publications. 
Um, you have um, access to the technical information used in, in the modifications. So all the TCs and STCs. And uh, can you scroll down just a bit, I think, or the next slide? So as I mentioned earlier, quick setup, um, you know, uh, literally pull the airframe, the um, owner, uh, sorry, the manufacturer, the OEM, the specific model, hit save, move on to the engine, the propeller. Again, every every component that you have on that aircraft, um, you do a one time uh, one time click um, and um, or one time setup. One click gets you the uh, gets you updated information. You get the daily alerts, and then um, obviously the ability to print the reports to present to the FAA. Great. We do have one more poll. Uh, what compliance issues do concern you the most in your operation? Right, we've gone through and looked at a bunch of different features, but we would love to know what really matters in your specific flight department. And if your option isn't up here, please share it in the chat so that we can learn more um, about how to make these types of features easier for your flight department to become more efficient. And then next, we also have another poll question about how valuable it would be for you to upload and store other documents, whether it's procedures, reports, internal documentation within a Varion publication for that centralized document management. And as you answer that, we are seeing lots more questions in the chat, so thank you so much for that. Uh, after this poll question, we will have a little recap and then we will dive into our Q&A. John, did you want to come in and share a recap of our key takeaways before we start to answer some of those questions? Sure, Danny. I mean, this is all about trying to keep you in compliance, but making it as easy as possible so that we don't spend a lot of time uh, in the office digging through uh, different websites. And uh, and so really the advantage to all of this, is, as Joe showed us, um, is that if you are a publications customer or you have um, profiling compliance, you will have a single source uh, doc hub with, uh, with an easy to set up aircraft profile. It takes just a few minutes. And once you set it up, it remains with you uh, so that you can you don't have to reset it up every time. And to, to be able to research service bulletins, uh, only see the ones which apply to you after you go through the first time and the and the airworthiness directives, and then have a sort of a one-stop shop to really leverage your time uh, and make it super simple to remain in compliance and up to date on uh, ADs and SBs and those. Those directives aren't just the ones from the FAA. I'd like to remind you there, I saw in the chat earlier, there was a question there. Um, there are uh, airworthiness directives from the CAA, from IASA, from several different regulatory organizations that are associated with it as well. Um, and it's nice to be able to get the AD alerts in the same location as your maintenance manuals, because uh, obviously those are the opportunities that you have to comply. Most ADs are either time specific so that when you're actually looking at them, you know, rarely, thank goodness, do we have uh, 80s that you have to ground a fleet for. It's always at your next maintenance uh, activity. So it's nice to have them in the same place as your maintenance manual. And then the last part of that is um, one of the best uh, features here is the ability to print out a compliance report. So in the off chance that you do have to uh, verify that you are in compliance with any of the 80s and service bulletins to be able to go in uh, select that aircraft and then pull up the report and print that out to have something that is uh, nice and official and uh, comprehensive is uh, a super um, feature to have to save you time so that you have to pour through all the logs again in one easy uh, report. So thanks, Dan. Yeah, no problem. And we do have a bunch of questions that have popped through. One I see um, that's popping up a lot is essentially, do I have access to, if I have access to a Varion tracking account, can I access Varion publications within that app? You, I can answer that. Um, 
you can uh, the uh, the uh, publications and the tracking um, are integrated. It's a unique feature that um, uh, no other tracking or uh, pubs uh, supplier can do. Um, you uh, obviously need to buy the pubs directly from Baryon, um, and you have to be an existing tracking customer. But uh, yes, you can. And we asked Karen, she asked, how will I know if I have access to Varion technical publications? So um, we can look into that for you, but um, you know, we have a next steps poll once we're going to conclude the webinar. So please select that you want to know more about Varion publications and we can get uh, set up with you. Joe, Some what's the, I'm sorry, Danny, let me jump in. What's the short answer to how she can tell whether on her existing Varion pubs account, whether she has access to a publication? Mm. Well, if she has, so she can, if you're existing um, a Varion customer, you can go to the um, uh, system set or the, the menu bar on the, on the left-hand side and go to easy subscription status uh, by clicking the easy subscription status uh, bar, uh, it'll tell you if what subscriptions or what publications you're subscribed to um, and uh, if they're current or not. So that, that's probably the easiest way. Yeah, we have a, a Dord asking, do we have plans to integrate uh, the web app? I think is that maybe still in relation to vary on tracking? Oh, to integrate the web app of tracking to publications? Mm -hmm. um, I know that has been discussed. I don't have a, a rollout date or a time for that. So that's one of those things that you'll just have to sort of stay tuned for. Um, but we're constantly evolving, growing, and getting greater integrations across all of our platforms. So uh, while I don't have a, a strict answer for you right now, I know that it's, it is, uh, it's definitely on our roadmap. Yeah, we have a question from an anonymous attendee. What about S SIL slash SIB. So service information, service uh, information bulletins. Uh, those are available from, from the OEMs that we have uh, publications for. So mm -hmm. while we have, you know, 110 plus OEMs, we don't, we don't have all of them, right? So we won't have service bulletin information for uh, specific uh, OEMs that, that, that don't partner with anyone around OEM, uh, around publications. So only the ones that we have publications for, but yeah, you have app from ac access to service information letters and, and information bulletins too. Okay. Uh, Chris wants to know if we can please show how compliance of scheduled maintenance is done in the airframe and engine setup. Joe, are we able to pop back up the, uh, the yeah, demo? Pop, if we can go to... We can answer another question uh, while that's getting set up, if you want. Sorry, what was the question again? To show how compliance of scheduled maintenance is done in the airframe and engine setup. That's a, that's a tracking function that um, that you know we can we can go back to you uh, specifically and walk you through that. I don't uh, have that information in front of me right now. Joseph wants to know, do you allow API access into the doc management solution for third-party solution developers? So there are, there are several different APIs. I'm actually, uh, so I'm an ops guy. I talk airplanes, not APIs for the most part. So I'm a little bit of a loss, but I know that we have APIs for third-party integration for lots of, uh, of partners there. I just don't know what your specific application is and how you pull that information. So um if you will drop your information there, more than happy to get you in contact with our, our software folks so that they can give you a more comprehensive answer. Yeah, awesome. Do we have access to Boeing publications? I'm Boeing. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't Boeing Air, commercial airframe publications? Is that what is that what the question? Yeah, sounds no. like. No, uh, not commercial uh, or... Uh... So right now, Boeing and Airbus uh, keep their own publication system uh, to, to themselves. Like probably the largest ones that, that we're in deal with is obviously we're a Pratt & Whitney uh, provider. Uh, we do Honeywell, lots of engines and APUs with Honeywell. And then as a Textron provider, all of the you know citation fleet that we have for them as well, Learjets, things like that. But as far as the commercial aircraft side of it goes, we don't yet have access to their their uh, integrated manual system, 
uh, is obviously pretty complex and has lots of um, lots of integration pieces in it for guided troubleshooting and chronic defect management that we, uh, you know, that that they want to keep um, as part of their customer platform. Mm -hmm. Now we've had a couple of these questions pop through, John, and I think you answered one during the session, just about bringing clarity to Varion Tracking Plus and how mm -hmm. that is the Rusada Envision product. Yeah, I tried to answer. Thanks, Danny. I tried to answer that before. So yeah, we Rusada joined us uh, in last winter, and uh, it has been uh, a, a great process of bringing them on board. Right now, Tracking Plus is basically Envision from Rusada. Right. So as we as we mold it into our platform here, we have right now uh, in tracking plus as uh, envision. So that's lots of it's sort of a different character from the flight dock side of the house, which is tracking. Uh, but as we bring those two platforms and make them more similar as of right now, you're still stable in your envision application. Right. It's just named tracking plus for future integration purposes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. And another question, we still keep getting some feedback. So I'd love to spend a little bit more time on even just talking about the integration between tracking and publications. So, you know, if there is an AD alert that pops up in publications, are you automatically notified in tracking? What other features are our benefits when we integrate these two platforms? The, the short answer is yes. Um, the, uh, the integration allows for alerts, uh, again, uh, you know, it's just a setting that you can get regardless of, uh, tracking or not, but, uh, but yes, you can get the alerts, um, as part of integration. Great. <clears throat> and then we do have a couple of questions I see from Lisa. One, do we have access to Rolls-Royce publications? No, uh, Rolls-Royce, um, uh, I believe it's Avial uh, has the uh, has the contract uh, and are only available through uh, Avial. Okay. She also asked too in the chat, can you do this in Europe with CAA or is it just the FFA when it comes to, I believe, like alerts and compliance? Uh, right now, it's just AD alerts through the FAA. Um, we don't have a setup right now for um, uh, EASA. Uh, we do have a separate library that will give you access to the EASA information, but it's not set up on the on the EASA alerts. And the CAA as well. And the CAA, correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Garrett asks, again, it's kind of more on the tracking side, but will these ADSB tracking features eventually be integrated into Varion tracking for users that do not subscribe to pubs? John? Yeah. So um, tracking actually has its own method of, uh, of tracking ADs and service bulletins associated with that. So um, it's a different it's a different pathway, but uh, you should be able to have access to all the ADs and service bulletins and tracking um, already. It's just a different pathway. This this particular one is profiling compliance through very own publications. Uh, so there, if you integrate them, then you get the one that comes through uh, publications, but you should automatically be alerted and tracking as well. Okay. Uh, does this, does publications interface with Amos? Not, not that I know of, not right now. No, okay. I mean, that's something we could look at. I'm also getting questions about specific types of pubs again like do we have access to bombardier pubs we have um, Learjet. sorry john yeah no that, that's what i was about to say we have we have learjet um right that's a that's owned by bombardier as far as the uh challengers and globals um we have been in, in ongoing conversations with them about it but uh as of right now we we can't sell the challenger and global uh pubs mm -hmm. keep your fingers crossed and stay tuned though <laughs> yes. Uh, does the AD and SB search apply to only libraries that are purchased? Uh, so uh, it's it's two components on that. So if you um, you can buy a, a uh, just a generic uh, based on weight class um, uh, AD library that we that we uh, make available and that 
that you would only be able to search ADs, uh, where you would get the service bulletins or have the service bulletins available to you for searching would be if you purchase the publications directly from Varian. That will include all the ADs and all the SBs, TCs, SDCs, um, and uh, some other regulatory um, content that you could use. But yeah, it's it's if you have the pubs from us, ADs, service bulletins, or you can just get an AD package, which would give you access directly to the ADs. Yeah. A couple of other questions here. How many aircraft can I build a profile for on Varion publications, like on a single pubs account? On it, well, so first of all, uh, profile compliance is is included in your subscription, right? One of the things that um, uh, differentiates us from the OEM is we include profile compliance, and then we also include the ADs, as well as some other regulatory information like the ST, uh, sorry, TCs and STCs. Um, as far as how many profiles you can create, um, as many as you can, uh, you know, as many aircraft as you have. Uh, it's unlimited uh, as far as the profiles you can create. Great. Uh, more specific aircraft and pubs questions. Do we have access to the Saab 2000 or the Embraer aircraft? No and no. <laughs> <laughs> we Look, we have over uh, 600 different library configurations, um, over 110 or close to um, 110 um, uh, you know, unique OEMs that we, that we, that we represent and are available through the, through the pub, uh, through the pubs, through the pubs platform. Uh, so, you know, these are, you know, I don't want to discourage anybody from looking into the publication side because, um, you know, we do have an extensive, um, uh, product offering, uh, the, the, the specifics here are, you know, we just don't have some of these, uh, unique models that, that people are asking for. And even if we, if I can just add, even if we don't have the airframe, a lot of times we'll have components uh, for that. So uh, the S76, for example, if you're an S76 operator, we've got all the turbo mecha aerial uh, engine packages that go along with that. We have lots of uh, avionic packages that are that are with that uh, as well. So if depending on what you're looking for, even if we don't have the airframe, a lot of times we'll have the supporting documentation for engines, props or rotors. Uh, avionics components, things like that. Yeah, APUs. APUs. We'll, in some cases, we'll have um, created already um, uh, support libraries. Um, uh, you know, Falcon comes to mind where you get the course, but you get the the T seed engine along with all the ADs for the uh, for the airframe. Um, you know, like uh, Dassault doesn't. You know, you have to go direct to Dassault. They are very proprietary and and um, guard their information. Uh, close to their best. So, you know, we offer you an alternative there to get all your ADs for the airframe. You get your service bulletins direct from the OEM, but you also get the corresponding engines um, along with it. Does Varian offer offline access to tech pubs? Yes, um, we do offer um, the, uh, we do have an app um, that's, um, uh, that's available to to customers and they can access their content directly from the um, from an iPad or a phone. I liken it to those of you who are familiar with for flight when you pack for a trip, you download all the latest information. Now it is locked at that point. It, you know whatever whenever you download it, that is the latest update you get. So if say you're a caravan operator and you have uh, a, and you work off field, shall we say, in a place where you're not going to have connectivity, the ability to download, all of your publications, all the maintenance manuals, everything associated with it, uh, and carry it with you. It works just fine. Uh, but it will, unless you're connected, I mean, the last thing you downloaded is what you're going to get, but it will be the most up to date information at that time. So you really don't have another option anyway. Yeah. What training resources or support do we offer to help these flight teams get the most out of publications? So um, we have um, uh, webinars posted, a uh, past um, and a uh, past and um, ad, you know, and letting you know a present. Uh, sorry, a future uh, webinars. Uh, you know, um, there's different um, uh, things. Uh, di there's videos within the publication section of, um, like with Textron, you get access to all the all the videos that come with this specific um, uh, OEMs. 
So um, in some cases on the um, on some of the exclusives that we have, we'd have access to uh, specific training material that we can make available to you as well. And um, we have a network of partners internationally that are trained and can can do uh, you know uh, training or you know my information will be at the uh, end of this uh, webinar. You can always contact me for specific uh, training information as well. Great. We talked a little bit about how many aircraft you can make profiles for on publications. Do we restrict any user access or when it comes to pricing, do we price by user? Is it just on the library? What information so, do we have for that? Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, so each publication comes with one concurrent seat. Um, you can create as many users as you need or as you want. So if you have a, a, um, uh, you know, a mechanics team of a uh, hundred, you can create a um, hundred individual um, users uh, where you run into issues is that you only have one concurrent seat. So we do uh, sell packages of additional seat licenses. Uh, uh, so, you know, um, additional people or, or additional um, uh, employees can access content. Um, at the same time, it's concurrent users that is the issue, not the number or concurrent seats that um, it's not the amount of users. Users, you can create as many as you like. Great. Well, that wraps up our Q&A portion of the webinar today. Uh, Joe, John, is there anything that you would like to add before we uh, conclude this webinar? Uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank everybody for their attendance and know that our information is available. And uh, as we're getting out to see more and more of our customers, let us know if you would like to see us uh, in your area, then we're certainly uh, more than happy to make that uh, make that trip to you when we're when we're around and um, and to help uh, do an on the site training event, run through any of uh, our products that we have again or um, or just to, uh, to just to say hi. So thanks for having us. Yeah, I'll I'll add as well. Thank you to everybody um, who who took the time to um, to uh, join the meeting here or the webinar. Um, uh, to John's point, um, I, I did notice there was um, you know multiple uh, attendees that were international. Um, John and I will be at Aero Friedrichshafen next month. So if you are going to be attending or would like. Um, you know, are going to be in the area. We'd love for you to stop by. If you want to give me a, a you know, just a heads up, um, we can set some time aside to, to meet. Um, we'll make some of that information available uh, at the end of the, at the webinar. But um, I just want to say we have a network of partners internationally that are, that are ready to help you. And, and, and with any, any inquiry that you have in, in your time zone or even in your local language. So um, we make it very easy for you to, to work with uh, Varion. Well, thank you gentlemen so much and I hope everyone here has a lovely day.